John, I have to say, your country has shone in its yes. finest colours for the last week. It is not true that it always rains in Scotland. The weather's been stunning. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it, Rob? Now I've been out in the golf course for most of it as well. Uh, I don't think we've had weather like this up here for, for many a year. So it's it's a lovely, lovely country when the, when the sun's out. And do you really savour the gap between the end of one season and another, are you able to fully switch off, or, or are you, or are you still keeping the elbow loose with an hour or two here and there? No, no, the queue's been the, the queue's been away totally since uh, since Sheffield. So I don't think I'll pull it out until maybe the I don't know. I, I think the European Masters will be my first my first tournament. I think I really don't actually know when it is. Maybe the end of July, August. So. Uh, We'll see what happens then. Yeah. Well, you, you're you're part of that, you know, triumvirate of excellence of players born in 1975. And there's nothing wrong with being born in 1975, yeah, yeah. by the way. Yes, yeah. You know, you're tickling towards 50, as am I. Are you still enjoying it as much? Yeah, of course. I still enjoy the the competing side. I know it's the old saying: people you, you don't enjoy that the practice side. Yet. Just that's understandable because you've been doing it. You've been doing it for so long, but the two of them go hand in hand as well. You, you obviously need to put a decent amount of practice in to actually be able to compete against the, the, the top players as well. So, uh, no, I, I still enjoy it. Of course, of course, I do. Now, you, it's, it's it's been your life, really. So, uh, but there is little, little, little parts of you that it just. I think it just slowly, slowly ebbing away a little bit where if somebody would have said to you maybe 10, 15 years ago you, you, you might not be playing snooker again you think no there, there wouldn't be a life without snooker I think now as you say you're, you're getting to the age of 15 you're, you're maybe beginning to look at a couple of different things who knows what, what's going to be for you uh, in the future but no going back to your, your, your point yeah snooker is still, still a big part of your life but are you that sounds as though perhaps you're thinking, albeit a few years down the line, you're thinking about a finish line. Well, I, I don't know the, the finishing line because I don't think you can you can ever take this sport for, for granted, really. Uh, I've certainly never done that. Uh, I, I think I've always said to myself, I, w I would still love to be a seed or still love to be in the top 16 competing at the Masters when I'm 50. So I haven't, I haven't stayed within that bracket probably throughout your whole career would, would, would be a good milestone and then when you maybe reach that one you, you then you'd maybe be looking to, to see where where your life is at at that, that moment maybe not your snooker life but maybe your, your personal life as well and then uh, uh, have, have a rethink as well maybe yeah because you're you're not far away you know I know what a dedicated father you are but you know you're not a million miles away from being able to go on some nice holidays with Denise, you know, it won't be long before all of your children are grown up and yeah. and you'll have that freedom to travel again and that that might start a new chapter of your life with Denise. Yeah, I, I, that's a good point because at the end of the day, they, 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 as every Stuka player would tell you, that there's, there's an important uh, family bit behind you, behind every, every Stuka player, whether it's a man, woman, uh, so, you you you've dedicated your life to to obviously the, the snooker and uh, they they've been behind you, uh, but then you've you've also got to then think about giving a little bit back because you're not getting any younger yourself. So it's uh, it's just one of the things. But no, you, you, listen, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? Who knows? Uh, let's look back on last season. It was really interesting because we had so many unusual scenarios it wasn't the the famous faces who were mopping up four or five titles each you know we had Gary Wilson uh, winning his first ranking title at the Scottish just before Christmas Rob Milkins had that fabulous win against Sean Chris Wakelin won the shootout and we didn't see as much of you as we normally do were you doing what you normally do in your own inimitable style were you blasting the practice table how, how were you filling those weeks when you weren't in the tournaments where we normally see you uh, no I, I wasn't I wasn't blasting the practice table I, I think the year previous I'd put a lot into 
the, the season, I'd lost a, a few big finals and I was doing uh, maybe a little bit off the table fitness wise and was trying to change my whole life and uh, it was like a full on year for, for myself but then as I said last year it, it, it was pretty poor on the table uh, and then you're maybe falling into a couple of little bit bad habits off the table as well now eating things and different things so it, it was only really it was only really near the tail end of the season I, I felt my game was coming back to a, a little bit of form and uh, and obviously at, at the world championships that, that that's your main aim and, and I, I played well the first couple of matches but then Selby just he, he just he just ground me down near the end and, and put on a great performance against me. So I, I wasn't too disheartened after the season. Now it took a great performance, I think, to Mark to to beat me, uh, and I'm I'm just hoping to then take the, the good vibes that I had at the end at the tail end of the season into this season because I think I will have to have a good season this season because uh, I've got a lot of points dropping off. So. Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to do well in some tournaments to to preserve maybe my, my my space in the top echelons of the game. I think you mentioned you know the season before last having a couple of heavy defeats, and you spoke really graciously at the end of that match where Neil came back at you to win the Tour Championship. Did you carry any scars from that Robertson comeback into last season or not? Not, not the Robertson, not the Robertson game. I, I thought he, I sort of tried to forget about that. I, I, I put in a good performance against Neil. It just so happens that I, I just couldn't close it out. Maybe in two or three of the frames, but in some of the other frames, Neil was Neil was flawless and he, he put me under tremendous pressure. It, it was really the match with Ronnie in the, the semi final uh, at the Crucible, such a big event that I, I didn't perform at all, and and my form just totally deserted me. Everything deserted me in that match and that. As I said, that 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 stayed with me for for like the first six months of the the like last season. It just it it just scunnered me. The old Scottish word that, and I did, I didn't really feel like getting my cue out of the case. It just but then as I said, you to try to go over that and then and then I changed cues as well. I just felt I'd, I'd no life left. Whereas people were were saying I was crazy because yeah, you'd maybe done done well, you got to a few finals, I just felt the queue, I just needed a little bit more power, so I changed queues and that, that gave me a little bit of impetus uh, with the second half of the season and hopefully I can try and keep it going now this season. And are you are you totally comfortable with the new queue now? Yeah, listen, I've always been one a, a tinker, tinker, not really changing queues, it was always really about the, the size and diameter and different things and I was always chopping and changing that throughout throughout the season but yeah I'm I'm pretty 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 comfortable now with that one. And it was a it was a it was a fascinating world championship wasn't it? And I guess the manner in which you beat Kyron Wilson, we all thought that match against Mark, when the draw was made, I looked at the I looked at it and thought Whoever wins, if it's Selby against Higgins in that in that portion of the draw, whoever wins that match is going to win the world title. I think people were surprised at the the manner in which Mark beat you in that one, especially bearing in mind how dominant you'd been in against Kyron in the previous round. Uh, yeah, you could you could see that, but then it's, it, sometimes it happens at the World Championship where you can have one player, probably most notably someone like Neil Robertson the last few years has played his best form in the first couple of, couple of rounds. That doesn't matter. It's really how you play near the end of the tournament. And and I wasn't taking anything for granted after winning the two matches. I, I know I, I started off really well against Kyron, but then I think he'd cue, cue problems. I could sense something wasn't quite right there. And he beat him with a session he spared. But I also knew it was going to be a really tough match against Mark. Uh, and then, as I said, he's, he's such a great competitor at that, that venue as well. Uh, but the, I feel, to be honest, I fully expected him to go on and win it. But but Luca was just Luca was just incredible. You now Luca was played a brand a snooker that, that reminded me a little bit like like Judd did maybe in 2011 when he got to the final. Uh, but Luca just went that one step further and, and and managed to topple Selby, which was a great achievement for him.
there was a really funny moment just b b before we go further with Luca. When Mark came in for his post-match interview, I think a few of us said to him, oh, John Higgins has just called you an animal. And yeah. he said, what type? He said, if it's a snake, I'm having words with him. If it's a majestic lion, I'm over the moon. But it was, it was a great compliment for you to give Mark because so many times we've seen losing players come into a press conference and call you an animal because of your, your mental fortitude. It was, it was just a really lovely moment that dissolved any tension that was in the room. It was a great compliment for you to give Mark. Oh, no, of course. That's not right. I've always been one of the players. Uh, you always give people credit where it's due. And when you think of guys like, like Selby, if he'd have went on to win that, that's five titles. He would have won what in the space of... I don't know. About Five out of ten, ten, I believe. Years. Incredible achievement, especially now. People say, well, well, I'm I'm one of the ones saying it, that the, the standard has never been better. So for someone like that to win, it could have potentially be five in ten years. In my eyes, that would have probably been better than than Henry seven in ten years with, with the quality of opponents that he'd be he would be coming up against. Obviously, didn't get there. Luca, Luca, obviously won won the match and deservedly so. Luca was. Was was a player of the tournament, uh, but no, he, he was he was he played he played incredible against me. Yeah, and in that final, when Mark missed the black off the spot, having come back to sixteen yeah. fifteen from sixteen ten, that was the moment that allowed Luca to dare to believe he could cross the finish line. Because I, I don't know what you think, but if Mark hadn't missed that black off the spot, I think he wins the title. Well, that's, I, I watched the final session, and even when Luca was sixteen ten in front. It, it, there was an airy desperation about him because I think he was maybe right. I want to try and get this over. I want to meet this over the line quick because he knows Selby can come back at you. And I'm thinking, my God, he's he's. It, it, there's a fine balance because obviously, what what got him to sixteen ten in front, the swashbuckling playing, going for the shots mm. and devil may care attitude. But th there is there's a fine balance, and then it started to go wrong, and Selby was getting stronger and stronger. And I, I do believe if, if Selby would have went 16 all, I think there was only one winner. But then the way Luca produced the two frame winning breaks to to win 18 15, it was as if he was he was playing down the club again on his own. He was he was incredible. And uh, there is only God, if you're lucky, if there's a handful of players that can can make the game look that easy under that intense pressure. And Lucas certainly won. We've always known about him. He's obviously won. Won events, he's beat me in the, the final of the, the Scottish Open and he played tremendous, but that that was a different level to, to do it against someone of Selby's calibre at, at, the, at the, the home of Snooker and to do it then, that, that must give him great confidence going into this season. And especially when you bear in mind, he'd never won a match at the Crucible. Now, I know he'd had a couple of 10-9 thrillers, one against Anthony, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, but... That's amazing, isn't it, to think that he goes from never having experienced a single match victory at the Crucible yeah. to taking the title. I know, but but I think that there was people even even saying someone like him could do that. I think uh, Phil Yates had done an interview, and he was asked for his outsider, and he says he says I'll go for Luca Brazil because he says even though he's not he's not uh, won a match there, he says if he gets on a roll, he is a type of player that that. That wouldn't phase him, the, the World Championship. And it certainly didn't phase him. He was incredible. Now, I'm interested on on your take on, on the class of 92. I know whenever I mention that to Mark Williams, he, he oh, sort of balks and says, oh, I'm not yeah. in the class of 92. Well, of course he is. But yeah. Yeah. all three of you are definitely capable of winning more titles. But can we read anything into the fact that, you know, Mark succumbed, to Luca and, and then obviously Ronnie did and, and, and you went out to Mark. Is there just the hint of the beginning of a changing of the guard or is that chat too early? Uh, changing the guard, I, I would be delighted to, for, you, for you to say that, changing the guard. I, I don't think I've been like the guard to, to stop people coming through. I would say a Sullivan certainly has. I would say me and Mark had, had lost that a few years ago, because I would say the guard there right now would be Robertson, Selby, Trump, and then you've got Mark Allen and Sean Murphy. Really, I think me and Mark are maybe hanging on where 
I think fingernail is a little bit, but a Sullivan isn't. He's still number one in the world. So, uh, but we are still capable of producing. Me and Mark, we're still capable of producing at any tournament. And if we play well, we can we can certainly do do a bit of damage. But I, I think it's maybe going to be few and far between those moments. We might have it at, at some events, but. Over the longevity of the whole season, I don't know if I've got it in me. I, I might still have quarterfinals, semi who, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It won't be for the want of trying because at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're competitive people. Now, you, you, you wouldn't be there for that amount of years if you weren't competitive. And I'm, I'm certainly still competitive when I got on that table. So. Uh, but I, I don't want I don't want to finish off just falling down the rankings and not 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 doing myself justice at events. I still want to be there competing with the best players. Uh, so I can only speak for myself. I'll still be giving it everything. I think. And deep down, do you still believe you can win more titles? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I certainly do. If I can bring my my best form, I, I certainly think I can win win events. As I've said in the last few years, it's, it's tougher now than it's ever been, without a shadow of a doubt. But, uh, but no, I, I still think I'm good enough, but that remains to be seen if I, if I can do it. Well, enjoy the golf, John, and don't go retiring any time soon because no. the snooker tour is richer for your presence. Cheers, Rob. See Thanks you next season. Much. See you soon.